Hello, defibrillator for today, where we trust in God for a word from within the word. Building slowly but surely, what are the fundamental scriptures that could possibly be a key, all of the keys, or just a push over the edge, like a tipping point, to be able to walk in God's fullness for our lives? We start off on Monday with uh, that God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you and taking care of everything you need for every good work and charitable donation. Then we went to Jeremiah 29, 11 for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. And if you want to know those thoughts and plans, you seriously need to go spend time with, with God and he will reveal them to you. But you need to do it out of a heart of being a cheerful giver, saying that as you sow, you're going to reap. So abundantly, you will reap abundantly with blessings. Very important. And then yesterday, it was Proverbs 16, 3. So shall your plans be established and succeed. And that's the scripture where you present your plans to God. And he will make your thoughts according to his will. And how cool is that? That's all you have to do is having that heart of serving. He does check the attitudes of heart, and it's more about what's in the heart. And he is saying, you know what? If you are going to come and bring those plans to me, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Planning is important. There is a responsibility that we have on our sides to fulfill, and we need to be all in, as God is. Uh, you know, if you have to go sit and think about it, uh, are you lacking anything from God's side? Has he like forgotten something? Has he missed out on something? Uh, has he not delivered properly? Mm. And you know that all of those are going to be direct into he has been 100% all in. So for today, now this one, you know, we, we're bringing it down to little old me. Sure, God's got a plan for the rest of the world and it's going to work wonderfully well for them. But you know, for me, uh, I'm not that guy. Well, maybe you are. Is there a way of seriously finding out what God's will is for, for you as an individual? Well, in Romans 12, it says this. Now, we're doing the Amplified Bible, and that's the classic edition. And it says, I appeal, Romans 12, I appeal to you, therefore. Hmm. Let me just take it back one chapter and see if he's saying, I appeal to you, therefore, what was the lead into that? Um, for who has known the mind of the Lord and who has understood his thoughts or who has ever been his counselor or who has first given God anything that he might be paid back or that he could claim a recompense for from him and through him and to him are all, all things for all things originate with him and come from him all things live through him all things center in and tend to consummate and to end in him to him be glory forever and ever amen so be it then we're going to romans 12 i appeal to you therefore so that's a very nice foundation that Come on, God is God, above all. So I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. Now, he's really asking us. This is like digging deep. He's, it's like he's begging us. Like, I'm really, really, come on, guys, you need to get this right. I appeal to you to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent, wait for it, service and spiritual worship. So before we even go and sing or do anything publicly, God is saying, if you want to do spiritual worship unto me, well, you need to dedicate your bodies presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice is a very, very big word, and it's a living sacrifice. Not kind of, um, I'm going to sacrifice my life and I'm going to die for you. No, no. God is saying, I want, to sac I want you to sacrifice your life and live 
for me. Now, sacrifice is the act of giving up something that you want to keep, especially in order to get or do something else or to help someone. How crazy is that, eh? I've never seen it like that. Uh, an act of offering to a deity something precious. Hmm. A destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. Something given up or lost. <laughs> so here we go. We need to, whatever we're going to look with, use our eyes to look at, we need to give it up for what Jesus wants us to look at. What we listen to, conversations, songs, movies, whatever we listen to, what we want to listen to, sacrifice it for what God wants us to listen to. What do we do with our hands? The conversations that we have. What we say with our mouth. How many times have I been in a situation where I go, uh-uh, don't say that. And then, guess what I do? I still say it. Because of what I want. And yeah, he's saying, no, no, no. Do it for what he wants. What does God want you to say, to see, to touch, to even eat? Every faculty of your body, give it up for what God wants you to do. Now that, for me, is very important. That's all in. All in. Every single thing of your physical manifestations sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Now, here's the one that's going to really separate you and I. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. There you go. If we are putting ourselves in a place where we do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, and we transform our, transform our minds completely. New attitude, new ideals, new behaviors, new habits. It will prove what is the good. Because remember, God is going to supply for every good work and charitable donation. Everything that is good is of God. So what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, here I want to also say, lots of things are good ideas. Not everything is a God idea for you so there might be a group and it's a good idea to do this but what god has called you to do personally is that the perfect will of god we have the permissive will of god but is it perfect for you because it goes on to say even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you heavenly father what is it that you see in us what is it what is it that you have for us what is perfect and acceptable in your sight for us father we pray through your holy spirit that you reveal it to us father you reveal it to us that as we are presenting our plans to you that this is what i want to do um, our thoughts father we just pray that it's in total submission to you to your word to your perfect will for us father we know that you are committed and dedicated as an entire kingdom for that to come to pass for that that you've raised us up to do father as you did with peter lord jesus where you said go and catch that fish and you'll find what we are looking for the taxes in that fish will be the money you sent him to do what he was good at and in that he found his provision Give us the confidence and the courage and the people around us, the faith to be able to pursue what is good but perfect in your sight. Help us find it, Father. Help us put our finger on it. Open those doors, Father, that can never be shut. 
And Lord, in that, reveal your will for us, Father. That will add value to at least one person's life. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your undying love for us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.